My name is Marina Healy. I'm the Spaces and Places Lead at Sport Taranaki. And my role is to work with our councils and local funders and community organisations who either currently have a facility or are looking at a facility project to ensure that those facilities are accessible, sustainable, based on need, collaborative and are operating to their full potential where there's a nice crossover with space to co and hopefully this platform can allow you to activate your facilities a bit more and I guess create those really vibrant community hubs that we all want to see in our communities. So tonight I'm co-hosting this webinar with my colleague Rachel so I'll hand over to Rachel now to introduce herself and our special guests who are presenting this evening. Uh, kia ora tato, nā mihi kia tato. Um, my name is Rachel Burnt. I am known as the Different and Better Lead at Sport Taranaki. Um, it is a wacky job title. It is for doing new and wacky things, so I think it's kind of appropriate. So my role is to, I guess, push the boundaries a little bit and, and do this differently to make everyone's life a bit easier. Um, we were quite excited about um, Space to Co and the idea of digital platforms. We've looked at quite a few platforms along the way. Um, we hope you'll see tonight about what we loved about what they're offering. I'm going to introduce our special guests tonight. So joining us, we have Al Brock and Sue Poana, um, who I can tell us a little bit more about their experience with the platform. So Elle is Managing Director of Space to Co New Zealand. Uh, she founded Space to Co in New Zealand in 2019. Um, she says it's after becoming obsessed with solving the problem of how difficult it is to find and book community spaces. So working with councils and all types of community venues. So everything from sports clubs to churches. And her passion is to make it easier for people to find, book and use local community facilities. Um, she wants uh, everyone to get out there and be using great facilities like the ones that you're managing. Um, what I love as well is she told me that she is a real user of Space to Co herself as a book um, because she does improvise comedy most weekends, which I think is actually pretty cool. Um, and I'd um, love to hear a bit more of that out. So um, also joining us from a beautiful part of the country, Tapuna, is Sue, Sue Pouananga. Um, she's on the committee for the Tapuna Memorial Hall. Uh, it's just outside of Tauranga, so you can imagine that it is quite busy. She's really been a driving force around putting on events in that community and using the hall to its uh, capacity. Uh, they host concerts, they host productions, and... Um, it was her job to go out and find a booking platform. So we're going to hear a little bit about her experience tonight. And um, it's kind of reduced the burden on volunteers like Sue. She's also, in her spare time, um, something that I love as well. She's a horticulturist and she's got a garden that's actually been featured uh, on stuff as well. So, um, yeah, again, amazing kind of stuff there. So just in terms of how this is going to work, what we're going to do is to introduce the platform and then they're going to do a bit of a talk interview style around what their experience has been like. So without further ado, I'm just going to check some of the technical bits here and just I think you should both be able to present anything that you need. So I'm now going to turn off and um, give you guys the chance to show what you're doing. Drop any questions you have in the chat, as Marina said, and there will be an opportunity at the end to be able to ask any questions that you do have. So um, thank you to our guests and over to you. Thank you so much, Rachel. Just a quick check. Can you see the screen I'm presenting? All good. Um, and yes, just a huge thanks to uh, Marina and Rachel for, for organising this, this fantastic event and inviting us to speak. Um, I'm super excited to hear more from those on the call about your facility as well. Huge thanks to Sue for um, being here as well. Um, 
And thank you all um, for, for being here and showing up on a Wednesday evening. I think that just shows how much um, you guys really care about your facilities and um, making you know them a, a hub for people in your community. So thank you very much for, for um, coming on tonight. Um, so I've just got a few bits and pieces to share and then we'll crack into um, just showing you more about the platform and chatting to her about how she uses it. Um, a little bit more about Space to Co and thank you for that fantastic introduction, Rachel. Um, I think probably that the overarching thing um, about why I do what I do is that I, I believe that community facilities are like TARDISes if you're a Doctor Who fan. Um, they're basically this place where so much happens um, within them and we kind of take them for granted really. They're where you know adult education happens, sports, fitness, wellness, healthcare, dance, performance, um, family counselling, celebrations, funerals. They're just these incredible like rooms of requirement um, where so much happens that they're ran on so few resources and from basically from the love of volunteers like yourself. Um, so I think they're really, really amazing spaces and um, what we want to do is just make it easier for, um, for them to be used by the community, but also to remove the burden from those who do manage them to make it as easy as possible for that, um, for that transaction and relationship to grow between your facility and, uh, and the community. Um, the main thing that Space to Co does is it's the best way of describing it, it's kind of like Airbnb for community facilities, um, but behind the scenes it does an awful lot more um, to help um, sort of automate some of the tasks uh, like availability management, etc. Um, but what we also do is a lot of free education, resources, training for anyone that works with or for a community venue. So everything from guides on you know, how to do more digital marketing for your um, space uh, to how to write a rate card. Um, so there's, and I can share some of that with you later on. Um, but before I um, go into um, a little bit more detail, I'd love to hear from those on the call, either by turning on your mics or by chatting in the chat, um, which uh, club or facility you're from, um, any aspirations you have for it. And just as a quick brainstorm, when you are managing bookings or if you're managing bookings, what are the challenges that you face with it? Maybe it's um, finding people to book, maybe it's too much emailing back and forth. Um, it would be great to hear um, hear from you what your what challenges you face. Okay. Just feel free to drop it in the chat too if you'd like to. see some, some furious typing. <laughs> Jenna, I'm just going to like put something out there just while people are typing. That the, One of the um, things that you and I have talked about as a hall manager is just that managing that paperwork as things. That would be something that I'd be really keen to hear about. I think if I was a facility manager, like how can you get on top of the paperwork? Yeah, the paper, but the facility is probably one of the main ones I'm involved with, the Coastal Rugby Club rooms. They, It's a hard one because the, our rugby club leases the building for six months of the, the year, then the community seem to as at the other six months of the year. So I see space to co as being a really, really good way to, so, so it's two different people involved and at two different points of contact. So anybody wanting to hire the buildings, they usually come to me, then I send them off to one of three different people. And but just the fact that we could just change the bank account number every six months and have the same point of contact. I think it's a win, but yeah, that, 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 that facility is going through quite a bit of change um, structure at the moment. So. I think give it another couple of months and this will be a great mm. step for it. Yeah, thanks Janet for sharing. So um, managing um, managing lots of different stakeholders on, on committees um, is a good one to share. Um, and Hilary's talked about um, the ability to quickly share lots of um, venue information so that they can make bookings easier. That's a great one. Um, I do have a, a, a list of, so we work with um, hundreds, uh, if not thousands, I think, of community venues. And what we often see is 
inquiries and availability is a massive time set, particularly when it's kind of back and forth. Um, it can be relatively smooth sailing if the booking goes OK and everything is just sort of we book and we pay and we use it. But if it gets cancelled, then you have to return the money um, and sort of reverse that transaction. If you take a security bond, then moving that money, making sure it's kept safe, handing it back is just another thing to do after the bookings happened. Um, and then collecting payment. If you don't collect payment up front, if you invoice, um, if you have to refund or continue to chase payment, it's one of those things that no one wants to be doing with their Saturday of, of invoicing for a wedding that's just, just happened in a rugby club. Um, so do keep... Um, uh, Keep sharing your experiences of, you know, uh, what you're looking to do with your space and the challenges. I'll make sure I, I try and touch on them as I go through the demo. So thanks, Katie, um, who's mentioned looking for um, different ways to kind of rent the space um, on an ad hoc basis. So um, this is just an example of how bad um, like the availability inquiries can be. Um, this was a friend of mine who tried to book a hockey pitch and it took longer to book the hockey pitch than it did to actually do the hockey game. Um, so there's lots of benefits of online booking for clubs and halls. Um, the main one I think is for the community is sharing availability. Um, to automate most of the stuff that you might be doing manually in let's say an email tool or a calendar tool. Um, it can be much simpler to do your accounting and managing the cash risk for your, for your hall. Um, you get much easier um, data at your fingertips. And um, it should be a way that you can grow bookings and revenue for your club or your hall. Um, and it's one of those things that it, you got moving to online bookings, there's, there's no um, like all out reason why it grows bookings and revenue. But the main are that because you've made it easier, people book. And that's that's literally the, the main thing that we see. There's no like magic ingredient. Um, there is a little bit of marketing benefit and being found online. But honestly, it's because you've made it easier. So you've taken away a barrier. You, you've um, meant that someone can just get on with the job of booking rather than having that back and forth transaction. And therefore, they go to you rather than someone else. Um, there are other reasons, um, in particular, the rising tide lifts or ship effect. So counterintuitively, with an online platform, it, the more spaces that you have in a local area available to book, the better everyone does because people just start using spaces more. Um, but it can also give you a way to actually create new revenue opportunities for your club. So you can start to rent out other things like storage space or market stalls or lots and lots of different things. Um, so I'll just uh, move on. So there's lots of also opportunities that are not just for your club as well, but for lots of people involved in the club. And I often think that clubs kind of have three main assets. So you have your space and your facility and your building. You have the community that supports that and then you have the team as well that you're kind of you know building the club around um so in terms of um the opportunity from the club facilities the most important use if you're a sports club is obviously the sports team that play there and their fixtures and their training and um all of the actual club activities and um, that they don't necessarily generate revenue um from the club facilities you might already have a fairly active user group which is the club members and supporters who might book for you know funerals and weddings and other things um, but you have this opportunity from the wider community as well who may not even realize that they can book your club they may feel excluded from you know I'm not part of that rugby group so therefore I can't book but opening it up has the biggest potential for additional revenue um, and the nice thing about opening up the wider community is all of the opportunities that you actually create for that, that community. So um, if someone starts, let's say, a yoga class or a market or a workshop or um, a kids karate school, that's something that's happening in that community. That's another opportunity for people to meet. Um, it's potentially, an, you know, a, a way for someone to put some classes on after work, make a bit of extra income. But it's also, you know, a new, a new yoga class is great for the neighbourhood. It means that people have that opportunity to go and have that wellness experience. Um, so it's a nice virtuous cycle of like stimulating activity in local communities by just opening up the space for use. Um, and lastly, the, the main thing we, we try to do is unlock your time. So if as a volunteer, your time is spent on back and forth emails, writing invoices, chasing payment, what could your time as a volunteer be spent doing? you know, in terms of activating the space, um, 
uh, building more relationships, promoting what's going on in the space, all, all sorts of things, fundraising, uh, putting on events, the fun stuff really, rather than the, the admin stuff. Um, so I've got a quick case study and then I'll actually show you what it does and try and answer some of the questions that I can see coming up. Um, so this is on a photo hall um, in Northcote and um, they are, so it's an Auckland council building, but it's leased out to um, Auckland Aussie Rules Football Club. Um, Jared, who's the president, um, was managing the bookings manually. It's quite popular. It, it has um, a lot of regular hire users. They share it with a church on a Sunday. Um, and they also had, a, it's hugely popular for kids' birthday parties because it's in a domain which has barbecues nearby. Um, and he was about to have a second baby and he was just done with managing their bookings inquiries. Um, so he swapped over to using the system and it's now one click accept the bookings. The uh, bookings have gone up because he's able to get back to people sooner and accept that booking and he's just ditched so much of the admin. So where his inbox was like lots and lots of you know inquiries can I ask you about this it's now a really straightforward here's your booking do you want it um, and all the details are in the booking and he just can really easily see what's going on. Um, over the last year the, the, you can see the casual use of the club has gone up so if you look at that blue line um, the casual bookings have started to increase as he's made it easier. Um, but what's been great is the regular use has gone up as well. So this was a new karate group that started in there where you can see that Monday, Wednesday, Thursday and Sunday, there's a new karate class happening for the people that live in that area, which is just so fabulous for you know bringing people together and providing that kind of fitness and learning activity for, for the kids. Um, I did have a little video not sure it's going to play properly so i'll leave that and go straight into a demo um and so i'll just click here um and i'm going to use sue's account for the demo and then we'll go and talk to sue straight afterwards and hear from her perspective how she uses it um so firstly um what the, the platform kind of has two sides i'm going to show you the customer facing side first and how customers find and um, and make bookings um, through the site. And then I'm going to flip and show you how the venue actually manages those bookings. And I can see we've got some questions on um, casual versus regular hire, recurring events and long-term bookings. I'll make sure that we do cover that as well. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about customising for different spaces because that's, yeah, that's super important. Um, so there are lots of different ways that customers actually find and book the spaces. The, the main one is if you have an existing website, that's fantastic. You just literally put a, a, a link from your website to the space to Code marketplace site and it takes them straight through to make the booking. So you can see here um, on Kakuna's site, they just have their normal site, which you may already have, but instead of, you know, inquiry or email or phone, it just takes them straight through to the um, to the booking page on space to go um, the second way people actually find the space is through um, the marketplace itself so because we're like this airbnb style platform if people know about us or have used us to book in another venue and um, they also come back and they start to search uh, for their next venue for a kid's birthday party um, so, for example, um, I, this was a, a, a search near Katy Katy, and you can see all of the different types of venues nearby, and you can click through, and customers can find, um, you know, what, whether it's in the right price or what facilities they're looking for, so they can drill down by the amenities, the different activities, the capacity, um, and you can see that if we were to get lots of spaces in Taranaki, this could be a really, really neat way for people to um, be able to see what's in the region and find and book for various different use cases. Um, so for example, I might you know, use one facility for a, a theatre rehearsal, but a different facility for a wedding or a funeral. And it just starts to stimulate um, lots and lots of activity in the area. Um, so booking is, uh, is really straightforward. And um, we think of each uh, space in your venue as its own separate space. So it can have its own pricing, it has its own cancellation policies, its own rules, its own questions in the, in the checkout. You can really customise and make each space different. So, for example, your community hall 
you might want to have a 30 day cancellation policy on that because that's a bigger booking and has a higher risk. Whereas your meeting room or your supper room, if someone wants to use that, that might be um, you know, a one week cancellation policy and you can have that being um, different. So um, I'm just gonna uh, swap in, I've got an, um, and um, make a quick booking here. So um, as you can see in Tecuna, they've actually got the whole venue for hire and that's one price. And then they've got different spaces within the venue that cost different amounts. And what this is doing is if the whole venue is booked, it won't let these be booked because they're like children of that space. Um, or if this one's not booked, but this one's available, these are also still available because they're like siblings to the parents. So you can have lots of complex spaces. So if you have, let's say you're a, a facility that has um, three tennis courts that could also be booked as one massive um, pitch for something else, um, you can you can have that set up or if you've got a big room that divides into two you can have that kind of setup um, so you can be pretty flexible with how you set your spaces up um, and then from a customer's perspective you can put heaps of information and this is what reduces the back and forth questions around can I pin things on the walls um, how noisy can the music be when do I have to turn music down can I have a DJ as a space for a live band um, does the kitchen have um, a dishwasher? Um, all of these questions can kind of be answered up front. Um, and you can also check the availability. And this is probably the thing that saves the most time for customers um, or your hirers because they can instantly see when it's available um, and make their inquiry, uh, sorry, make their booking based on that. Um, it also allows you to charge for extra items. So for example, if you charge for a projector hire or a piano or uh, something else or a cleaning charge like um, like Tecuna does um, you can have those as optional you can mandate them so for the whole venue they charge they always mandate a cleaning fee um, but for other rooms to mandate that you can also set those mandatory charges to be seasonal so if you charge for your lighting after 6 p.m in the winter months you can set it to do that so you can set it to add in charges based on time of year and time of day um, in different use cases so that it kind of adds up the right price for a customer. Um, and then there's other bits and pieces as well as well that it does. But I'll just show you a really simple one, which is the supper room. Um, and I'll go and make a booking. Um, there is also in the checkout process, you can also ask questions. So you can ask questions to elicit things like, you know, will you be or um, uh, would you like the table set up in a certain way? And you can ask, I think, up to 30 odd questions. I wouldn't advise actually doing that many, but um, you can set lots of questions. Some venues actually use this to collect data um, for who's booking their venue. Um, if they're using it to sort of um, using that data for grant funding so we've opened up our venue to um all these different people in the community they're from these different suburbs and um, can we have a grant for a you know part-time cleaner type type scenario um so the person puts in their um booking inquiry and then they continue and then um uh if they have an account their details will be saved if they don't they would set up an account and then we just go submit the booking. And um, what happens at this point is we have um, held the money on the customer's card, but we haven't taken it. So we've not actually moved the money out of their account. Um, we're sending a booking request to you and you can accept or decline it. So this, there's no, um, you have to take all the bookings. Um, you can decide and I'll show you how you can make that decision when I flip into Sue's side of the, um, side of the um of the tool um if you were to decline it we just remove the hold from that customer's card and the money's freed up but if you accept it you've guaranteed that the money's there so you're not having to chase the payment later if you have regular hire bookings the payment for those is a little bit different because obviously you wouldn't expect someone to pay for 12 months worth of bookings up front and i'll show you that in a second um but i'm just going to flip to um show you how that's handled from the venue's perspective so you can see the other other side of the um, marketplace 
Um, And, and while that's loading, I'm just going to briefly show you. Um, sorry, we loaded. Here we go. Um, so what we can see here is this is the main dashboard area for the um, for the hall, um, and this is basically all of the admin facilities for the for the venue to manage their bookings. So I'm going to show you a few bits and pieces that you can do. Um, the first is. Um, uh, accepting or declining a booking. So this is the booking I just did. Um, you can see it to check the availability just in case another pending booking came in. Um, you can have a look at the guest profile. So if they've made bookings at this space before, so it looks like I have made one, um, you can see that. So you can instantly see if they've had a history of booking with your venue. Um, you can have a look at the transactional data and see you know, what's happened with the charging. You can see the receipt that's been sent for previous bookings. Um, and um, you can also um, have a look at their card, like a trust report for their card, which would flag if there was something unusual or fraudulent about the card payment that's been used. If you wanted to add a bond to this booking, so if you don't know me or it's a high risk booking like a 21st or a hen or box party, you can add a hold a bond amount. So this is instead of you taking a check or well, the checks don't exist anymore, but if instead of you taking um, the payment for the bond and, and holding it in your account, we hold the liability. So you uh, select the bond amount. We will take that hold on the customer's card four days before the event, and then we'll return it, I think, about five or six days afterwards, as long as you haven't made a claim. So if you make a claim, say it, it breaks something, you tell us how much, we'll split it, and then give you the money back and then give them their money back. So you don't have to remember to pay the money back. Also, you're not holding that risk in your bank account um, because one of the issues with taking deposits and security bonds is that you can end up actually piling up a lot of cash that's not yours to spend until the bookings happen, which can be quite confusing from a financial management perspective. So all you do is you apply the bond and that's set um, to, to, to come off the customer's card. If you wanted to decline, if you wanted to approve it, you just click approve and then it will take the customer's cash, send them a receipt, send them a confirmation, block out the calendar and remind them um, nearer the time. So you just do that, approve the booking, um, or you can decline it, um, and that will um, uh, remove the hold from the customer's card, inform the customer, and you can give them a, a reason for that as well. So I'm gonna approve this one. Um, and then we'll cancel it in a second so that he doesn't have a random booking in a separate, separate room. Um, so um, I'll show you a few other bits and pieces in Sue's account, and then I'm going to switch into a fake account so I don't show you real customer data. Um, so um, managing the bookings is really straightforward. So if you want to see a view of your bookings, you can get this nice calendar view, which you can kind of toggle on different things. So for example, if you just want to know what's going on in the upper room, you can just turn on the supper room. Um, you can also see a nice table view of your bookings, um, which can show you, which will show you easily um, what's going on um, per month, how many bookings you've got. You can easily find things. If you want to find a booking, you can search by name. Um, you can also see um, different views of your data. So you can see all of your, um, your revenue attendees, whether they're going up or down. Um, and again, you can toggle that by different things. You can also publish your bookings to an external calendar. So if you um, want to share it with, let's say, your cleaning contractors, park rangers, um, anyone that needs to see what's going on but not necessarily have access to all of this booking data, you can publish it with li you know, limited or basic details to all different accounts. So if you want to see on your phone, what's going on in the space just through your normal calendar, you can toggle the spaces on and off um, and see them at that room, room view, which gives you that kind of you know, makes it easy to share what's going on with your team, if they're, especially if they're not managing the bookings. Um, and then I'm just gonna swap into a, um, a slightly different version of site, just so that you can, um, I'm not showing real customer data when I show you the regular hire bookings because we've got um, customer stuff. Um, 
So, um, regular hire is managed a little bit differently. Um, so we call this verified applications. And basically, if you've got like a yoga group or an indoor bowls group or a choir that uses the space regularly, their bookings get put in for a year, two years, three years, and they just block out the calendar space. Um, so, and they're charged monthly to the customer. So say, for example, um, we've got a dance school, and this will, um, uh, you can see all of their future bookings here. They've been put in, um, in, in sort of a booking template, and the customer can manage those or cancel them if they need to. And therefore, what's invoiced at the end of the month is what's actually happened. So you don't have to create the invoice. It's just going to create the invoice on the bookings that have happened in that month. Um, the cancelled ones will have been removed based on the policy and um, the invoice gets generated. And then we collect that money from those customers. Um, so uh, what that means is we've already collected the payment for your casual hire. So all of the you know, kids' birthday parties and one-off uses that have happened in the month has been collected because they paid by card up front. When the invoices go out, we collect the payment from the um, regular hirers. So about three or four weeks um, after that, you get one lump sum payment for all of your revenue for the previous month, which means that the money you get in your bank account is money you can spend. You don't have to worry about deposits or worrying about what might be cancelled or refunded. Um, so, um, uh, that what that looks like is you basically get an email each month from us with a report that has all of your bookings fully reconciled. So in your accounting system, you get one revenue sum. All you need to do is attach the, the reconciled um, booking report to it. And that's it. You've done your accounting. You've got your um, revenue. You know, you can spend it. Um, and it's as simple as that. You don't have to chase the payment um, and the rest of it. And. Um, I can see lots of questions coming in, so I'll just go through a few more features and then maybe come to some of those questions. Um, lastly, last few things. So you can make manual bookings. So this is where you block out your calendar for your fixtures, your internal use, your your um, your committee meetings, anything that doesn't have um, email payment associated with it. Um, you also have a messaging function, and this can really help with um, streamlining communication. So if you have a big group inbox, sometimes it can be quite hard to understand who's responded to what, what the last point of conversation was. I know some customers will use four different email addresses to contact the same venue. So this streamlines it so that all of your communications are in the same space. So if you want to know what's happened between a customer and the venue, it all happens here. You can also get into things like um, um, a, uh, you know, an insurance policy, if that's important to your run sheet for an event or anything like that. You can also communicate en masse with your um, book people at book. So if you have a last minute cancellation, flood damage, you can email all affected bookings in one hit and it will tell them uh, what's going on with the space. Um, and then lastly, you've got access to all of your data. So this is your dashboard at a glance where you can see your revenue, your attendees, um, booking counts, you can uh, have different years and you can see all of that kind of important data here. Um, but you can get much, much more detailed in the report mode. So um, you can uh, generate reports, um, save the filters. If you have a monthly revenue report, you need to go to your committee. If you have a report that you need to build for council, you can actually get that to schedule a report sent to different different people um, and uh, you can filter it by space and um, I think I think I've covered like the vast majority of the stuff you can also do things like tag bookings so these can be quite easy for managing stuff like they require an alcohol license or this one might be noisy or this requires the wheelchair one to be put out um, and you can easily filter and search your bookings by you know alcohol policy re required um, so that's like in a nutshell <laughs> and everything it does. And I appreciate I blitzed through that. And I'm really, really happy if people are interested, we can do one on one demos and go through in lots more detail for your particular um, venue. I'll just try and cover some of the um, questions and then 
um, we'll hand over to Sue, um, who I'll, who will talk a little bit more about her experience, and then we'll have a big Q and A at the end as well. Um, so we've talked around customising the availability pricing and booking rules. So yes, you can customise it for every single space, and you can be quite detailed with that. Um, smooth communication. So yes, all of um, all of the communication is automated, but you can also see what's been sent as well. So it's really easy to check back on that communication. Recurring events and long-term bookings um, is, is managed in the regular hire function. And yes, you can have completely different pricing for your regular hirers. So if, if your regular hire pricing is not the same as what you would charge a casual hirer or it's free, um, that is, you can just set that up and use the user level. Um, we do lots and lots um, to protect um, sensitive information and client data. I can send you um, our uh, privacy policies and the FAQs on how our data is stored, where it's stored. Um, we have um, a security certification um, where we, we, we um, can show the, the methods that we take to protect that, that data. Um, payment processing and financial reporting. So payment processing the cards is done by Stripe and for the direct debit element is done by Go Cardless. Um, it doesn't integrate directly with um, Dero, but you don't need to because it's just 12 transactions a year. So all you do is you'll see your revenue payment come into your bank account, which would sync up with your Zero account. And then you just um, uh, mark that as revenue earned and attach the report to it. Um, other staff members. Um, yes, you have as many users as you want, and um, it records everything that every user does. So you can see the history of who accepted the booking and what they sent. Um, analytics. Um, so yes, you can definitely see booking trends like revenue, attendees, yeah, event types you can track, different user groups, um, and um, some of the graphs. It's not to the point of like a Google Analytics, but it can track a lot of those key points. Um, Venues branding, so um, we're working on improving this and it's some feedback we've had before of like you kind of go from your site to our site and um, there are some things you can do to make the branding of your um, brand a little bit more elevated, but that is also on our roadmap as well. Um, yeah, peak times, we definitely have promo codes and discount codes and you can set those um, in different ways. Um, um, customer support and training, yes. So um, customer support is, we have live chat, phone and email support in business hours, New Zealand business hours, um, with, you know, real people. Um, and then the support to roll out, I'll talk a little bit more about later, but it, essentially we work directly with your team to onboard you, set your account up. Um, depending on your complexity, that can take um, a few weeks to get your customers on onboarded, or it can take you know a couple of days if you're a really simple space to set up. But we, um, as a business, we, we we consider it a partnership with your venues, and we don't we certainly don't just disappear. We're here if you need us. Um, so I think I've really quickly answered all the questions, but um, I'll hand over to Sue so you can hear someone else's voice. <laughs> A little bit. Um, I do have um, some questions that I've prepared for Sue, but firstly, it would be great to learn a bit more about your hall. Okay, well, the Tapuna Hall has just celebrated last year 100 years. So it's an old hall. But four years ago, it was removed to make way for a roundabout, which we desperately needed, so that's fine. And two years later, we ended up with this beautiful new facility, so we're wrapped. It's just gorgeous. We've got the state of the art kitchen. Fabulous new spaces. So that's our hall. And it's always been a centre of our community. I can remember taking my children to concerts. I went to dances when I was 13 in our Tupuna Hall, played badminton. So it's been a real focal point of our community for years, forever. So it's a real pleasure to actually be working there now. Um, and so could you tell us a little bit more about your role on your committee? <laughs> I was volunteered to be on the committee. <laughs> so when the old hall disappeared, the committee kind of disappeared as well because it was two years lapse. So we've almost got a brand new committee. So my role was, can I please help with the bookings because the poor person doing the bookings was overwhelmed. So I said, yes, I'll help you as long as we can make some changes, <laughs> which we did. 
So my role was to source, basically it was to source a new booking system that was effective and efficient. And, and what was your process for, for doing that? How did you go about finding a, a booking system? We were re you were recommended to us by the Western Bowerpoint District Council, a person that I know there, and so I Googled you, <laughs> as you do, and and did the demo, went through the demo online, and then contacted you. It was simple. Hmm. Um, and so, sorry. You go ahead. And talked our, our committee into listening to you, and you presented to us what was involved in the com in the booking system because they were a little bit sceptical, mm. but old school. Mm. Why were they sceptical? What were some of the concerns they had? They thought, well, we're all a bit older and we might not be able to book online and our customers won't like the fixed price because prior to us, prior to me taking over, we, the, the pricing was all over the place. I can't afford it, so whatever. So we didn't have a set pricing. We didn't have set areas. There were no rules, basically. So we decided, I decided we need to change that. And they were a little bit sceptical that they wouldn't, some of our customers wouldn't like that and wouldn't be able to make the bookings. But most people can now book a motel room mm. or hire a car. So we, I thought, okay, well, for those people that can't do that, I'm still available to make manual bookings for you. So it wasn't excluding them, but it was trying to encourage people to do it online. So it took quite a while for some of our bookings to accept that they can do it online and they always knew they could call me and I'm having trouble, what have I done wrong? And we've just worked it all out over two years. It's taken two years, but we've worked it, worked through the process basically and everybody loves it. Yeah. What was, um? it's really interesting that you kind of went through a process of having to change your pricing that's really really common because often over time um everyone might have a different fee depending on who was the booking officer at any given time when it was arranged um how did you come up with your new pricing model and how has that um gone down with with the hirers we decided we would just try and keep it fair we wanted to keep our our mission statement is to keep it available to everybody in the community. So we don't want it to be expensive, but we need to cover our costs because we are, we do still have to pay our insurance and our power, et cetera. So we tried to keep our pricing really, really fair. And sometimes it was less than possibly what we could get in revenue but we also want to be available to everybody. So we just set fees and that's it. This is what this is worth. This is what it's going to cost you. And this is what it's going to cost you. And we don't vary it for our casual bookings, unless it's a charity, which is a completely different scenario. Yeah. 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 Um, the other part of, of making sure that your rate card is um, uh, consistent is moving to um, a really simple pricing structure as well. So hourly payment, uh, sorry, hourly pricing that could roll up to a day rate or, or a half day rate if it needs to. Yeah. But that's one of the, um, I'd say, precursors of moving to an online booking system because if your if your um, fees and charges are sort of based on um, you know a, a more complex model, um, that can be quite difficult to translate into an online system. So keeping it simple can make it much easier for customers yeah, to book. Yeah, very simple. Yeah. Um, what were some of the, um, before you moved to an online system, what were some of the things that, that um, the previous booking person was, was struggling with? What were the things that were causing them time? Well, we would, she would receive a phone call and then she would meet them at the hall, which is fine, and then she would have a, a calendar like this big and a pencil and an eraser. And everything got put on that. And so the booking was confirmed, then an email would be sent to our treasurer who would send the booker, the hirer, a, an invoice for the bond. And once the, bo the booking was completed, they would send an invoice for the booking. And then once everything was considered to be fine, the, book, the bond, another email would go back to that person saying the booking is fine, please refund the bond. And it was just so cumbersome. And also lent itself to a huge error that was my biggest concern that we could double book we could forget to run one you know erase one or a pen and a paper on a paper is just not 
efficient, in my view. So that was my biggest concern and my biggest challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I looked at the calendar and thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to get my head around this. Because it's just scratching things out and to add it in and it, oh, we need to find a better way. Mm. And it was just very cumbersome and not, and not efficient. But my biggest concern was that we could have errors. Yeah. Not like there was a double booking. Yeah. yeah. Um, and talk to me a bit more about, so you, um, um, you got set up on space to go. How do you, how do you now use it at Tepuna? How does it work um, in your committee? Who does what? I do it, basically. I do everything. <laughs> um, I will receive a, a an email from Space to Co saying you have a Space to Co message. I'll go into Space to Co and have a look at the question and answer the questions, accept bookings. It's so simple. It's really, really simple. Accept bookings. I uh, will take people through the hall. They want to visit the hall, the facility, and have a look and see what's available. But most of our most of our questions are actually now answered online, in our in our space. So it's very very easy. My job is simple. Um, what feedback have you had from the community? I think the main feedback has been that it's been easy, and the communication has been easy. So that's the biggest thing. The communication's got to be easy. And that's just a simple email from me. Uh, no, on the Space to Co website. So it's all, as you said before, Alan, all in one space, one place. Mm -hmm. All there. The communication's all there. And questions are answered. And that's it's finished. I will say, I think you've got the biggest list of five star reviews of any of our places on the website. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> um, the, the, um, the hire is really. Um, they just uh, you, you haven't had anything less than five stars <laughs> in terms of um, the, what the customers rate. Um, yeah. I've I've seen that you've had an increase in your in particular casual bookings. We have. Um, what what kind of new new users have have you found people have been using the hall for? We have a lot of weddings. We have a lot of first birth, Indian first birthday parties. We have funerals. We don't allow 21sts unless I can guarantee them, so that's not necessarily me guaranteeing them. We have 60 birthdays. Um, it's just it's just go ongoing. We have so many books. I think it's word of mouth. Mm. I think it's just word of mouth. People and we have people saying, "Oh, we heard about." I have people ringing, phoning me saying. Well, we we went to a function. We went to a first birthday party here three months ago, and we want to book this space because we had such a great time, and that's what's been happening. And it's just, I had five bookings last Thursday. I was telling you, it was just incredible. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what's your advice, Sue, for um, anyone on this call who's um, looking to increase their club or hall usage? Um, what would you kind of um, recommend that they do? I think for us, the most important thing is that we have really good information on our website. We have photos, we have the facilities are all stated quite clearly. The rules are stated quite clearly. So people know what they're getting for their money. They know exactly how much it's going to cost them. Um, they don't because if we've tried to cover every base, they don't have to come back to or fro with all the different questions. Like, do you have tables? Do you have chairs? How many chairs have you got? How many cars, car parks have you got? And that, for us, is really makes it really important and easy. I think, um, it's, it's, it, like I say, it's just snowballed, absolutely snowballed. But it's mm. the communication and the ease, the ease of booking I believe the ease of booking and the ease of communication. When people search for somewhere and they send a quick a quick email, I do try and respond within a few hours of every email that I receive. Um, it's simple. Um, awesome. Thank you so much um, Sue, for sharing. Is, was there anything else that you'd like to share um, with the group? Yeah, I, I would just like to say when I, we first <laughs> had the idea of Space to Co, I went, oh my goodness, somebody's got to learn this system, um, and I guess it's going to have to be me. So it was a bit scary, 
and my biggest concern was to verify our, our regular users. And it did take a little while to talk them around and get them on board because they were old school and they wanted an account every month and they would just pay it. They were a bit hesitant to give their credit card details, etc. But we worked through that. But the whole setup system with Al was so easy, wasn't it, Al? We just we had what three meetings, mm. meetings, and it just it just all fell into place. So it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Thank and you. the best thing that has happened because um, we're all volunteers. We're all volunteers, and it's just saved so much time and it's efficient. Which is what I like, yeah. And the money's supported, and so we get an account once a month. We get a payment once a month, and the treasurer just loves it. Just comes into the bank account once a month. It's all there, the fees, everything. It's none of this. How many bookings did we have last last month, and have we received the bond, and did we pay the bond back? Which is what we were facing. Easy. Thank you so much, Sue. I've got a couple more bits to share and then I'll, I'll open up for questions from, from more questions from everyone. Um, so um, a couple of things. How do you get started? So if you're interested, I mean, um, I'm really, really happy to do um, it, it will either be me or my colleague Pauline um, to do a one to one call and go through the platform in heaps of detail for your particular spaces to use the case and answer all your questions in, in, in depth. And um, if you decide to move forward with it, um, you, you're not alone. So we, we basically work with you to um, build your spaces. You can always edit them at any time. You're not, you're not reliant on us to, to do that. But um, uh, we, there's training that you can do. Um, and then you have ongoing support from our team. So if you have like gnarly booking inquiries or anything that you need help with, um, we're always here. Um, the, um, the big question is how much does it cost? Um, Space to Co is set up. Um, we we aim to work with as many community venues as we can. So we aim to be a net zero cost to your organisation. So the hope is that our fees are offset by growth in your bookings. Um, so the additional revenue and earnings should offset our fees, which are um, we don't charge you anything for any free bookings, your fixtures, your internal manual bookings, anything like that. We charge a, a fee for paid bookings in the same way that Airbnb or um, TradeMe charge a commission on paid bookings through their site, um, plus the, a tiny merchant fee, which um, we're charged by the, the payment provider. Um, and that the way that that works is that essentially um, each month we just remove our fees from the payment we make to you. So you don't have to pay us anything up front or you know, pay a bill to us. We just kind of take, take the fees out of that. Um, but as I said, it should it shouldn't actually cost you anything over time. Um, if we can just increase, it doesn't take much to increase your bookings by fifteen percent. If we have one extra wedding a year, that can actually make a big difference. In, in um, also, you'll find that you have knock on revenue from the club that's not subject to our fees. So if you have um, you know a, a wedding, you're probably going to get bar revenue as well, which you know we don't have anything to do with. Um, and then onboarding is free, but we do charge a deposit for it. Um, and the reason for this is because um, we work with many, many venues and um, we were finding before we charge a deposit, some would start and then not finish. <laughs> and it was taking up quite a lot of our, our team's time. Um, so we, we charge our a completely refundable deposit. Um, and if I think the, um, the guys at Sport Town actually said to contact them if there's any issue with you know, coming up with that cash um but um yeah we're, we're we don't charge you for any of the support time or any of the onboarding and, and we work with you for as long as it takes um to, to get you up and running and, and get you trained um if you'd like more resources i'll send these to um, marina and rachel but we have a five minute video version of what i showed you and we also have an executive two-page summary that you can share with your your committee um we have heaps more resources so if you're looking at how to create a rate card or or you want a step-by-step -step how you move to an online booking system, we can send that across. We do webinars every month, um, which is not me talking. Uh, so we get experts on different topics. So we've had everything from how to do uh, grants and fundraising, um, how to make your space welcoming, activating, um, and all of these are available on demand as well. So you can go back to our repository and if there's anything that you want to learn about, you're very welcome to those. The next one is on building strategic relationships. Um, 
and I think I think that's it. I think that's everything I had to share. So I'm really um, happy to open up to questions um, to either me or Sue. Um, feel free to turn on your mic and ask a question, or pop it in the in the chat or in the Q and A. If you do have a question, if you just, you'll see on the top of your screen, there's the raise your hand bar. So if you just do that and I'll sort of try and order it so it's sort of, everyone gets a chance to speak. Um, I'll start with a question for you, So, um, yeah. Obviously you're a really busy venue and I was just really interested to understand, um, I guess, how quickly did you start to see an increase in revenue? So I'm guessing you did. Um, and what was that like? Mikey, I was so excited when I got my first booking. <laughs> I think they printed it out in colour and took it to the... Um, anyway, uh, it built quite quickly. We, OK, we went through COVID, which didn't help, but our bookings built... In three months, we had doubled our bookings. And it's just snowballed since then. We are really busy now. In fact, I have to juggle people to fit them in. So it's been brilliant. Excellent. And I guess another thing that um, I was kind of thinking as, as I went through, and probably a little bit for both of you, um, one thing I really like is the data that comes out. And I think, you know, if people have more time to just sort of explore that. Um, I, I, so are you using it? Al, have you seen examples of this where you can sort of use that data to sort of start for things like funding and grants? I think you touched on it a little bit in terms of being able to prove, well, we need this kind of funding for this extension because we know our users like that because I think that's actually one of the real key advantages of a platform like this. I'm just wondering if either you could speak to that. We have <laughs> we have actually done this. We've just current just recently applied for a tech funding. Um, we had a problem with our hall which was a beautiful hall but it was too hot in the summer. So we decided to put up solar heating, solar panels on the roof at they're quite expensive. Um, and to offset our power that we were saving, generating, we put in heat pumps or cooling system. Um, and so we applied for tech funding for that and received half the funding, which was brilliant. Um, but they did need to see our revenue. And we could prove that we were busy, but we didn't have the funds because we are a non-profit organisation and dependent on our bookings. Yeah. So it was very important. It was actually really, really useful to be able to give them that data. Um, it, yeah, it's a great question. So, um, firstly, from a um, RST perspective, so we we um, have a, a few clubs uh, that work with Active Southland, and um, if the clubs choose to, you can actually just make your dashboarding available to uh, someone at um, your RST, um, so that they can grab the data and um, use it to, to help support you better. Um, so that's one uh, one way of doing it. But equally, you can also, if you wanted to, set up a, a regular report. Um, particularly if you're if your building is owned by council, and you're a peppercorn leaseholder, you can um, get all of your monthly stats that might go to your liaison officer at council with your revenue, your attendees, your booking reasons, all of that kind of stuff. Um, that means that you don't have to do it, and that you just set and forget that, and that's done. Um, that's probably one of the most common uses. The second is, is obviously your monthly reporting back to your committee. Um, so you just you, you um, making sure you've got all that data available. But yeah, the, the grant funding one it makes a huge difference. Um, there's a guy that runs a rehearsal venue in Auckland, and um, because they use as part of the booking flow, they actually collect demographic data to show the spread of uh, all the different people that booking. They they receive funding from Creative NZ and um, uh, different charities, um, and they can prove uh, that they are serving a specific part of the community um, because they can show where the bookings came from. Um, so that's been um, a, you know another big use of the data. There are also very operational uses for the data, which um, so for example, uh, bigger organisations that. Uh, you know, might need to send a different department the bookings each day. They just set a report that sends them the bookings every day. Um, cleaning contractors, um, I know, know it's been used for park ranges as well. So if you have a really big park, you can send stuff there. Um, 
yes so there's there's lots and lots of different things you can do with it but generally it's it's an at a glance for you to see are you growing are you getting the goals that you set for your venue um and having all that data means that you can make better decisions about you know where you allocate your funding and resources um as well can i just ask a question al um are you able to utilise the space to co platform to hire out some of the things that you may have within your facility? Um, that it might not be the room, but someone might want to hire the tables and chairs, pick them up and take them away. Are you able to utilise space to co to to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, we so firstly, you can you can you can do it as part of the, you know space booking as the additional items and charges. But if you have other stuff that you want to share with your community. You can, and we're always, um, we're actually like blown away by what people use it for. Um, we've had dog kennels, we've had market stalls, we've had beach wheelchairs, we've had community buses, we've had waste trailers, we've had zero waste events kits, we've had, um, you know, indoor bowls kits, uh, anything really. And, and it doesn't have to be on the marketplace as well. So if you don't want to publish it on the marketplace, you can have it just on your own website it'll go directly through to the, the page it does it's not you know it doesn't have to be on the marketplace um so you can use it as, you know some places use it in, in some some spaces use this entirely privately if you want to well it looks like we've got a question from alan hello alan. yeah hi can you hear me yeah good i pressed the right button then um good evening to you all um i'm just wondering uh i'm the chairman of a very small community rural hall <clears throat> and I can see the value of this um, system uh, in high, well populated areas I'm just wondering um, we don't have a lot of bookings uh, in a year I'm just wondering if you have uh, many uh, clients um, from similar uh, low rural halls with, with low populations uh, communities um, that's a great question, Alan. Um, yes, we do. So uh, probably one of the smaller ones is um, Bakamarama, which isn't too far away from you guys, Sue, but is um, oh. is is fair, it's fairly remote. Yeah. Um, they uh, so they they use it. They, they they're not nearly as high volume as as Tepuna, but they still as the bookings they do have, they still see value in it. It just you know, saving the the team time. I think there's a local guy there that often uses it fairly ad hoc to do some bigger um, some some big craft work in, in the space and mm. the fact that we can just book and go and use it um, and sort of do that hassle free without um, taking up the committee's time with them having to charge them for it is enough of a use case in itself. Um, you'd be surprised also with um, even quite rural halls what people from a little bit further afield might want to use it for. Interestingly, with some of the rural people in Auckland, um, they've been used for music videos by kids. Like the, the opening it up to younger people in your in your community can be um, an incredible thing for them, um, especially in terms of like a space to create, a space to you know start up new things. There are, there are some rural halls I know that will they have like a free day for youth in their area. So if you want to use it on Thursday, it's free for the youth of, of that particular, you know, village or, or area, um, which is quite a, a cool thing, I think. So even if you're not using it to increase revenue, you can also use it to increase bookings with some initiatives like um, free residence co-working space on a Tuesday morning um, and everyone can come and bring their laptop and work from the hall and um, there's lots and lots of different ways you can use it if, even if it's not about revenue yeah. yes thank you we do have uh, quite a bit of use from a school which mm. is just over the road but uh, we don't charge them of course um, and, and that's fine by us another thing i was going to ask you is if i was somebody who was looking to book a venue somewhere in my province um, and I went on to Google and um, just Googled um, uh, venues for hire, Taranaki or something like that. How far up the list would Sport Space Co be? Not not very high in Taranaki, um, frankly, because we we haven't um, really done much work in this area. So we um, we 
what with um, Essex, so after we've started working with a few venues and, and got a bit of a cluster, it, it, it does quite quickly improve, but it can take up to three months for Google algorithms to update. Um, we, the, the site is geared up to, for exactly that purpose, which is once you're on it and there's a few around you, it will start to return results for space to co within that area. But until there's venues in that area, it, it, it doesn't do much. Um, but it basically does all of that without you having any technical knowledge of search engine optimization um, so that you can be found by people from, from further afield. Um, so, yeah, in places like Auckland and um, 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 uh, Matamata, where we have uh, uh, you know, quite a few venues or Southland, um, we feel like that over time, yes, it would, it would help you be found in Google, definitely. Yeah. OK, thanks for that. One thing we do offer, I just would throw in there, is we do lo have a local community discount. So anyone who makes a booking, if they're a local Tapuna resident, they get a, instantly get a 20% discount, which really encourages locals to book the venues. And that's been useful. Cool, thank you. I think that was a really good question, Alan, about um, how is it easy to find um, in a place like Taranaki? And I guess introducing Space to Co to our community and gaining that critical mass around, you know, a number of venues being brave enough to go, um, this actually makes sense. And we're going to walk down this path to then lead others or to, to show others that, the, that it can make sense for uh, facilities in Taranaki. So that was a great yes. question, Alan. Yeah, but we have to find the leaders of the, you know, the chair of the committees to have the guts to go go ahead with it. You know. Yeah. So that could be yeah. a um, an issue for say uh, rural razzle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking the same, Alan. Yeah, maybe yeah. rural razzle needs to meet again. So. Oh, hello, Janet. <laughs> hey, Alan. Yeah, cool. But e even if you have a few early adopters, you know, of rural halls that can see it uh, being beneficial and then sharing with other halls how it's helped, yeah. um, help their hall bookings and help their yeah. volunteers free up their time, I guess. Yeah. yeah good project but, for Janet. Yeah. <laughs> Go, Janet. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's probably me one with Janet helping. But what I was going to say, Alan, is often like when I go to book a venue, like it might be, oh, I don't know. I've, I've often thought about starting a dance class, um, something like that. And I think, oh, where do I start? And so sometimes I'll look, but I don't know how big the venue is or how much it's going to cost. And I have to call someone during their workday. So I actually just don't bother. Whereas I think if I could see what it had and how big it was, et cetera, et cetera, then I probably would make some inquiries. Um, but often if I have to go searching, then I'm kind of, you've kind of lost me as a customer. Um, I know that might sound a bit lazy, but I'm trying to juggle a million other things at once. And if it's easy, I will book it. And look, um, I have to say that even some of the bigger venues don't do that as well as they could. So it's not necessarily just a small venue. Um, sometimes some of those small venues do a way better job because you've got great dedicated people here. Good comment. Is there anything anyone else would like to raise? Um, just conscious of time? Right, so what I will do is um, just in terms of just sort of moving through, um, Presentation. I learned heaps and I've heard some of it before. I've learned a lot tonight and it's been great. Um, what I would say is um, someone did mention that um, around the bond. If you are interested in that, something that you think might be a barrier, come and talk to us um, because it might be something that we can actually help out, help out with. Um, we have, we are able to sort of give a bond for up to two. Uh, communities at a time, so up to two entities. So come and have a chat if you think that is a barrier, but you might be interested. 
Um, so, yeah, the other thing we were going to say is if there is a, a group in Taranaki who are potentially interested, so we'd probably be looking at sort of four to five different venues, then um, Alan, her colleague Pauline, are happy to come down and actually help people on board. So actually sit down with you and go through that, which I think um, is really, really cool. And I guess the other thing I just wanted to touch base on is if you are interested, most that emails on me, um, read the, the webinar, so do get in touch. And, and um, you know, I'm happy to connect you with Elle and her team and, and have this one-on-one -on -one conversation because we think we can really sort of start to get some momentum in our region and we think that we can really start to get some of those venues used a lot more regularly and hopefully getting some revenue new back into our communities. Um, so thank you very much, team. There's a couple of things that I guess we wanted to touch on before we logged off. Just in terms of my own work, the project is called Taranaki Different and Better. It is about doing things that are different. And just to flag something that we do have coming up, we will be, from about October this year, offering a service for community organisations in sport and recreation, and it's quite a broad definition, just around the opportunity to use one of our staff members' time to do your bookkeeping and accounts. So that will sort of be a small hourly fee, which will pre-agree with groups. And you can come on and sort of have some of that day-to-day -day bookkeeping thing, which is another big barrier to people really thriving in community groups. So if you interest anyone, I'll drop some of that in the follow-up as well. I just get in touch. Um, I'm going to Maria, because um, she's going to close this out and just touch on a few things that she's doing. So from me, thank you very much. Um, it's been a good night and really um, great to touch base with some of you around um, the region. Thanks, Rachel. Kia ora koutou anō. Um, I just wanted to, because of my role as a Spaces and Places Lead, just wanted to reinforce that if you have any facility challenges that you wanted to discuss or you have any uh, things that you want to help and support and guidance on, feel free to, to reach out via my email or my phone number, which is found on our website. I do want to thank Al. Ellie, sorry, and Sue for pre presenting to that tonight. It was really informative and I think people really got a good insight into what is available on the platform and how they can really benefit from exploring its use and how it could apply to your particular facility. Um, I do want to mention um, those that threw out questions too. Really grateful for those because often a question we're thinking, um, maybe three or four other people are thinking uh, similar questions as well. So um, nice to have those questions coming through. So thank you for your for your presentation this evening. And I'll close off with a karakia. Kia uru mai. Ahora, aho kaha, aho maya, kironga, kiraro, kiro toki waho, re 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 ho, pai marere. So any questions, feel free to reach out to Rachel and I. Otherwise, enjoy your evening. Kakiti.